Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today. I know that you had a massive celebration yesterday for Christmas and here we are the day after uh, coming together again and I, I also want to acknowledge the reality that we're not able to meet in person today but um, this is a very powerful tool also that the Lord has given us that we can stream and through the use of technology be able to bring to you uh, a sermon and bring to you teachings and bring to you inspiration and hope which is my prayer that it will happen for you today. So thank you for joining us this, uh, this Sunday. It is the day after Christmas, and I'd like to just take a few moments and, and actually take you by the hand as we follow the story of Joseph and Mary, as we find in the book of Luke that we've been reading every single day since the 1st of December, um, and just follow through on the story that we find there. Uh, and I know a lot of emphasis and focus is given, and we have done that as well on the Sermon on the Mount, and of course the interactions of Jesus with the religious leaders, how his teachings were impacting his followers, and on and on and on, the miracles that he did as we were just walking through in our daily reading the book of uh, Luke. But I want to go back actually to the beginning of the book of Luke and, and, uh, and kind of spend some time with you uh, rediscovering a narrative that perhaps oftentimes we overlook. And that is, um, and I've, in fact, I've titled the sermon this, uh, Where Do We Go After Christmas? What happens after Christmas? Now, I don't mean once you finish the opening of the gifts and the meals and the celebrations that you have in family, uh, I don't mean that. I mean, let's go back and see what Joseph and, and, and Mary did after the birth of, the G of Jesus. Now he was born, born in a manger. We know the story. We've gone through that. But then what happened after that? They had gathered there for the census to be able to be counted as they have done, you know, uh, as we see in Scripture, that's done over and over. And even today in our culture and society, they do the same thing. Uh, so they met all the requirements, but then what happens afterwards? And I think this is very appropriate as we have celebrated yesterday. What happens today, Sunday? What happens tomorrow, Monday? What happens moving forward? What are the things that we might want to be thinking of as we explore this title, Where Do We Go After Christmas? If we look at Luke chapter 2, verse 39, it gives us a glimpse into what happens after the birth of Christ. Look at what it says. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. It tells us here very clearly in just a few words that after they met all of the requirements at that time, remember they had gathered together for the census, there was a time of festivity as well, uh, and also they met what the law required of them as well. Um, then they circled back into their normal course of living. They went back to their own town. They went back to Nazareth, their place. And, and what I discover here that it's important for us to see that um, certain things were waiting for them when they returned back home. Look at the three that I've outlined. There's probably more, but I wanted to look at these three with you today and see how they apply in our daily walk with the Lord. The first thing is that now when they go back to their own town, now after they have fulfilled the law and the requirements, their civic responsibilities, they went back to Nazareth, um, they needed to share about the miraculous appearance of the angel. They needed to talk to the people now People were going to ask questions. Family members and friends, neighbors were going to ask, what is this thing we're hearing about? Because as we know, the, uh, the, the message of the impending birth of Christ was announced to the point that even the authorities were upset about the birth of Christ. And they inquired of the Magi to see where is he because they wanted to go and worship him as well. So this was not a, a, a secret, if you will. This was um, publicly known. And now Mary and, 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 and Joseph would have to journey back to Galilee, journey back to Nazareth, and be prepared to share about the miraculous story. Look at, uh, and what story was that? The angel 
appeared to Mary. He says, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor in God. You will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and his, uh, and his name will be Jesus. And he will be a great man and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. Your son will be king of Jacob's people forever, and his kingdom will never end. She had to now explain that as a teenage young woman, explain that to her neighbors. What did this thing really mean? Was it truly a miracle? And I think you and I need to realize that our own celebration of Christmas is not just about the giving of gifts and receiving gifts and, and Christmas trees and, and, and cooking up the best meals that you can cook up once a year, which you do on Christmas time, which is wonderful. But it really is about talking, is this truly a miracle? Is the appearance of Christ, the fulfillment of Christ in your life and in my life, real? Did it really happen? And what I surmise, what I, what I conclude from that, that, that uh, uh, presupposition that I put place to you right now is that Mary needed to be thoroughly convinced deep inside of her, regardless of the pressures externally, that she saw what she saw, she heard what she heard, and she did what she needed to do because she was convinced that it was God. And you and I need to live our lives the same way. We need to uh, make sure that what we do after Christmas is not stop talking about Christ and his birth and wait for another 12 months to talk about him next year. But we need to make sure that we realize this is more than just a date on the calendar. This is something personal that we firmly believe in, regardless if others do not believe that as well. And Mary and Joseph were confronted with that in their returning back home. We need to think about that after Christmas, now that Christmas is over, what will we do with that miracle? The second thing is they needed to explain to their neighbors and friends and those that they left behind um, this baby Jesus. How is it possible? And this had to be the question because it's the question today. And people are people. We don't change after years and centuries pass by. How is it, Mary, that you gave birth, became pregnant and gave birth in these very unusual and maybe even unnatural circumstances? She needed to be prepared that this gift of God that was now in her and then she birthed, uh, how did that happen? And and deal with the questions and the probing that people can do when they don't believe the miracle that you yourself have experienced. Because think about it already, about it, as we have been reading through Luke and in the other complementary scriptures that we've read and taught over the last several weeks as we journey through Advent, um, it was a miracle. Here is a, she, she became pregnant with no male intervention. It was the, the Holy Spirit, if you will, inside of her that created this Jesus to be born. Now that, that doesn't make sense. It's almost, it's, it almost sounds crazy as I, I even say it because in the natural, that does not make sense. She needed to go back. Now with the evidence that although Joseph was not the biological father, this nonetheless was the savior of the world. How do you explain that? And, and, I, and I've come to the conclusion when it comes to the miraculous, regardless of what people think, you have to make sure you have to make sure in your heart that this was truly a miracle of the Lord, that this was a fulfillment of God. Even when others and even people that are close to us, that love us, family members, friends, neighbors, co-workers, uh, start questioning the, the, uh, a miracle that we experience, you have to really believe, completely be believe. The tangible evidence is there. You were lost and now you're found. You were sick and now you're well. You didn't have a child before, now you have a child for, in Mary's case. You have to be totally convinced that God still does the miraculous. And the evidence is your life. So in our post-Christmas experience, we need to not only share uh, to our neighbors about God's miraculous uh, angelic appearance, but also be able to show the proof of the miraculous in our lives. In Mary's case, it was this baby Jesus. And then the third and final observation that I have in this going over of the text, because I've read this story so often, but every time it's, the scriptures are so rich, you keep learning something new. 
Uh, in this going back now, what they did after the birth of Christ, they needed to go back to their own town, Galilee, Bethlehem, I mean, I'm sorry, Nazareth. They needed to go back, right? So not only share about the angel, not only share about the baby Jesus, but then, look at this. They were going to experience the growth, maturity of Jesus and him finding his purpose. The evolving of the prophetic was going to become a reality for them. Look at what it says in the text also in, in Luke chapter 2, verse 40. It says, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. So in other words, Mary and Joseph not only brought back this baby, not only experienced the angel speaking to them and all of the other things, there were many, but I just, as I said, for the sake of time, I'll only highlight three. But now they were going to have the added blessing of seeing this blessing grow, mature, develop, and find its purpose and destiny in life. And church, we become spectators of the miraculous. We become spectators and see the growth of what God has birthed inside of our lives, inside of our hearts. The things that we were praying for and expecting from the Lord, all of a sudden he brings it into, into fruition as Mary with the birth of Christ, as Christmas is celebrated. But now afterwards, until the place of his final destiny and purpose, Mary was able to contemplate with her own eyes the prophetic declaration becoming real and growing and developing. And that means to me that I, I, God is going to allow, allow us an, a, a front row seat into watching our purpose and destiny begin to emerge and grow before us. We're going to be eyewitnesses, if you will, of the gifts of God that he has presented over our lives as Mary did uh, in this story, in the after Christmas story. So I want you to be mindful of this as we uh, think about what goes on and what happened after Christmas. Mary went, Mary and Joseph went back home. They went back home and had to tell the people about the angel and had to tell the people about this baby that they brought back. And then also had to be front row spectators to see this gift of God blossom and grow in their lives. I hope this ministers to you as we conclude Christmas 2021 and look into the future of now receiving a new year and then entering into 2022 that uh, God has done mighty things over us, that oftentimes the most powerful times in our, in our journey is after we've received a tremendous gift or blessing from the Lord, as we see in Mary. The fulfillment of Christ the Savior was not at the birth, it was after Christmas was over. The greatest days in your life are ahead. The greatest moments in your life are ahead. The greatest demonstrations of God's power in your life and family are ahead of you. Let us pray together. Father, I thank you for these precious moments that I share with my brothers and sisters as we reflect, Lord, on this story, which is so, so intriguing, what happened after Christmas. And that we see, Lord, that uh, the story did not end with just the birth. In fact, the story started with the birth. And we're, we're able to learn so, more from, so much from Joseph and Mary. I pray your blessing over your people, Lord, today on this Sunday as we conclude Christmas celebration of 2021 and now look forward to the end of the year and the start of a new year. Bless us, dear Lord. Bless every family that tunes in today, that watches us, every individual that is there on the other side of the camera. I thank you, Lord, as I pray blessings in the way of everyone. Once again, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in. Stay connected with us as we uh, embark on the next few days before us. God bless you richly.